Hey everybody, what is up? It is time once again for A Man and His Stool for the week ending October 27th, 2024. I am the man, Scott Christopher, and I am seated upon my stool, which is more like a swivel chair. Uh, in this past week, I've heard from some of you uh, very, uh, you know, observant viewers who have uh, asked, wondered why in the world would I title my program A Man and His Stool? because it sounds so, you know, scatological. I believe you've just answered your own question. Give that some thought. Uh, so we are uh, ready to take a look at what happened over this past week. Let me see if I can make all the technology work. Blah, blah, bluey. First up, hoop, boom, go Cougs. Um, not going to lie to you. I'm still a BYU fan. True blue through and through. I don't know why I wouldn't be. Just because I've moved away, I'm still not quite a Tennessee Volunteers fan, although I do take some pride in the fact that, that their, their football team is doing well and that they're a big, huge, beautiful school. I mean, that's kind of fun, but I'm, I'm a Cougar baby, and uh, wow, I watched the game against UCF and was not terribly surprised. Uh, I kind of had a feeling that we were going to go down there and probably have our way with them uh, based on what they'd been saying that people had been saying about their team in Orlando and just uh missing some key components or that they've you know been around their fourth quarterback or whatever. Yet they still have, you know, this amazing talented running back. But I I've learned to have trust in Jay Hill and the defense of uh, BYU that they will make the adjustments that they need to. And they seemed to do that. There's a lot to talk about. And unpack is the, the quote, you know, the word of the day. These We need to unpack a few things before we move ahead. Let's unpack. Um, but I'm not going to. It was just a great win. Let's leave it at that. They are definitely in the national conversation for making the first ever 12-team NCAA football playoff. They are definitely in the conversation since they sit alone atop the Big 12 of being in the Big 12 title game and possibly winning the title, I think there should be, you know, if they don't win it, they should still win like the regular season title if they end up with the best record. But that doesn't mean you necessarily are going to win the automatic bid to the, to the, the playoffs. But either way, I mean, if they were just to get an extra game out of their seat, two games, you get the championship game and a bowl game. That's 14 games. Now you throw in there a playoff or two. It's a pretty sweet season. But as mentioned, I wasn't going to unpack. And I feel like I've at least, you know, clicked the the hinges, the, uh, the, 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 the clasps on this. Let's move forward. A little later in the week, I was able to, uh, earlier in the week, because we started late, Yesterday, Saturday was the few days before that I was able to go to the Nashville LDS Temple with that little fella right there, uh, who is um, <laughs> I just I just got a thumbs up and I have no idea where it came from. Uh, has that ever happened to you? I who who the this isn't even live and I just saw a thumbs up. Anyway, uh, him. Jose Alberto, he's a new member of the Church uh, of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, of which I am a full-time practicing, completely believing, totally dogmatic, absolutely love it, have been it almost my whole life and will never change. I throw down the gauntlet. I couldn't care less what you say against it or what you think you know about anything. I love you. You are a child of God. Come join us. Um, and so he did. And those cute girls there with the wet hair um, that are they're drying off it's because we were in the temple doing baptisms. And uh, and Alberto was able to come for the first time and be a part of that and, and do a bunch of baptisms himself, which was cool. And that was really a lot of fun. There's my wife, Liz, also um, there. So oh, the fall colors, aren't they great? And most of them have come and gone by now in a lot of places. But We've got some bright, brilliant, pinky red stuff uh, where we live. This is our little neighborhood part of it. I was out jogging the other morning, just soaking it in. As I get down to the end of the run, getting almost to home, running through kind of a, a newer area that's being that's under construction, but there's already people there, kids living. Uh, 
this truck goes barreling past me. I mean, 40, 50, 60 miles per hour on a road that it's, it's, a, it's a neighborhood road. It ends, in fact, in a cul-de-sac. And I'm thinking, where does this guy think he's going to get to where I'm not going to find him? Does he think he's going to get away from me? He goes ripping past me so fast, it scared me. I mean, one of the earbuds practically popped out of my ear. I do one of these things, big old arms outstretched, looking to see if he can see me in his rear view mirror. It's a big Dodge Ram with lawnmowers and landscaping equipment. He goes tearing around the corner. I'm thinking, this guy's an idiot. I, 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 so I jogged up because I knew I was going to find him. Now, when I was younger, I would have avoided any kind of confrontation because I was young, skinny, scared. Nowadays, I, you know, I've watched enough... Um, you know, like UFC title fights and things that I feel like I'm pretty well equipped. <laughs> Actually, I'm just an old enough get off my lawn kind of guy that if you pull this kind of garbage in my neighborhood with, I know two houses down, I know the little kids that live there and he's, <clears throat> uh, so I'm coming after you with a phone. So I turn the corner, I see him coming out of the end house, driving out. Now, now he is leaving the cul-de-sac. I step out into the road, turn on my camera, and start recording. And I'm thinking, if this guy goes past me, I'm at least going to get his face. I mean, so I was very obvious, and I had a look on my face, you know. <laughs> it's so over-the-top, theatrical ham, you know. But I was, I was, I was pretty ticked. I'm sweaty, and, you know, and I've put on some weight. I cut a striking figure, um... But anyway, so so let me play, see if I can play this little video. Now, there is no violence in it, sadly. And in fact, I turned the camera off too soon because, but at least you can kind of get a sense of what's happening. He, he starts talking to, he rolls into this conversation as if he and I have been on the phone or something. And I have any idea who he is and what in the world he's talking about. Uh, let's go to it now. Here he comes. I'm standing there. He does stop. She turned off my truck in the, while I was driving. I'm trying to take her home. She turned them off, off my truck. Who and did it? Megan. They just moved in down there on the end street or whatever. You were going like 50. Man. I know. And she turned off my truck. Was like I was like, dude, just let me take you home. And then I. Yeah. Right. Megan. Good old Megan. She. She turned off. She turned off your. What? How? <laughs> His story was so bizarre. That I I, turn, I thought I'm going to turn the camera off. Uh, uh, clearly, this isn't coming to fist, fisticuffs. I I kind of wished it were, because it's been a long time since I've scrapped. Um, but anyway, I don't know who Megan is. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know where they're coming from. Apparently, according to his the tone and tenor of his part of the conversation, I I must be in on something. But eventually, I just said, and you heard me say, "Dude, you were going like 50." I mean, I, that was, I was ready to, and he just went, glossed right over that. She tried to turn on, and I'm thinking, if she turned off your engine, wouldn't you be slowing down? Or wouldn't your car have stopped, your truck have stopped instead of speeding up? Because you accelerated past me. And I said, I just don't know. He said, don't worry, I don't plan to ever come back to this neighborhood. I don't want to see her again. And I'm like, good, because I'm taking a picture of your license plate. I'm not happy. Oh, it's cool, man. It's cool. But are, are we cool? I said, yeah, we're cool. I let him off with a warning. Good day to you, sir. Let's, uh, let's keep our speed down, huh? Protect our children. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay, so that was truck douche. Uh, that's I titled the video. It was, it was truck douche. Uh, there's a happy couple of happy campers. This was uh, Saturday earlier in the morning. We went to a fun little um, Halloween park, hay bales, pumpkins, rides and things. Uh, pre pretty janky. Uh, I think I've got a, a video describing that. So we, we're we having a, an underwhelming time out at uh, this little pumpkin patch Halloween festival place. We're, we're here for the grandkids. 
but it's the most underwhelming. Uh, I guess we're we're comparing it to corn bellies in uh, at Thanksgiving Point in Lehigh, Utah, where it's not cheap, but you've got all kinds of really cool stuff, tons of food, great attractions. It's you know a huge corn maze. This one is is out in the middle of the country. It was a great drive, really pretty. But they charge $17 per person to come in. To, I'll get some pictures. Luckily, I, I, uh, I, I saw the $17 per person thing uh, before we actually entered. And when I went up, I, I said, and my a kid and, and his wife and the two little ones went up, and, and their total was like $55 for this janky little joint. But it was such a long drive to get there. I and mean, it was out in the middle of nowhere. And it really was just a legendary Tennessee rolling hills, beautiful leaf color, uh, changing drive that it was like almost worth the cost of admission just to drive there. A place called Greenbrier. It's right by White House. Very colorful names. But um, we were a little, a little dissatisfied with things. But... Uh, you know, once we got there and the grandkids got there, we were able to take pictures and have fun. It was all about them. And oh, and by the way, they gave me, we, they gave us a senior discount. So we got them down to 13 each because he was like, well, how old are, he said, I can give you the senior discount. I said, how old is that these days? He said, I don't know, is it 55? I said, oh, good. We're definitely, we qualify for that. Plus we're their grandparents and uh, but 13 to take a picture with a bear made out of a big old bales of hay. But, um, and of course, Lily, our granddaughter, runs off. I just think that's a very cute little pose as she's kind of running to the foreground. It reminds me of like, who is it, Rock Hudson in, uh, you know, in North by Northwest, just kind of out there in front. It's very Hitchcockian. Uh, what else did we have this week? Oh yeah, just a couple more pictures of all the joy. It was a cloudy overcast day. There were 15 people. It's <laughs> a big old slide. We did have some fun on the slides. Uh, I should I should point that out. Uh, one of them was a redneck slide, this this uh, tubular tunnel thing, super slide. There there it is, the plastic corrugated pipe held up by two by fours. There's my son, grandson Harry. Woo! He actually did that slide uh, 15 times. There's Lily and Josh, and my wife, uh, Grandma Liz, uh, actually. <laughs> Nice, crap. She did it about 10 times with Harry. She's a really good sport when it comes to that. I loved this this take going down right behind Josh and Lily with Harry coming down behind me. <laughs> That's very cocky. Yeah, it's kind of a vertigo thing going on. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, I got another thumbs up. I still don't know what that means. That must just be something in my software. I'm sure you don't see it. Goats and cattle, ah, a lot of fun. The, the week ended uh, with a very successful little activity at the church. First of all, it was a, a trunk or treat and a chili cook-off for the whole ward. So all the hundreds of people in the ward, out of all the hundreds of people, about 50 came. I don't know. It wasn't terribly all that many. And then right afterward, we had planned a little Latino get together for all those who speak Spanish that the missionaries are teaching or that are new to the ward or that are just friends or visitors. And I mean, I went around to, I went up to Kentucky to a, a Spanish branch up there. I went down about, uh, down into uh, uh, Mount Juliet, which is about a half hour away to talk to P. I called around. The missionaries invited everyone that speaks Spanish, and uh, and this was actually what we got. And 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 pretending to look at it, of course, as you as you know, uh, because it's just a green screen, <laughs> so I really don't need to pretend. But uh, but it was so much fun because uh, that couple on the end over there. That well, my hand it's it's over that way. Anyway, uh, the guy with the hoodie. They came from Portland. Tennessee, which is actually in the geographical footprint of our ward, but they attend a Spanish branch up in Kentucky in Bowling Green. But they came, and then the guy next to them with the soccer ball is Egyptian. He doesn't even speak Spanish. He came. 
the whitey next to him, Alec, works with me. We we're both uh, ward missionaries. We both speak Spanish. Uh, the guy next in be sandwiched in between there is a total stud. Uh, his name's Juan, uh, Juan Carlos. Next to me over there is another sweet uh, elderly sister in the ward. I shouldn't say elderly in case she's watching, but I mean, she's not young. So she's anyway. <laughs> Kay Abernathy, very sweet lady. She speaks some Spanish, some sisters next to her, a couple next to them. They also, are the, the wife is from like a, a Peru or Bolivia and Spain, which is kind of fun. The, the blonde on the end here, she's also from Mexico, I believe. Uh, the two in the front, Danny and, and Alberto. Alberto, you know from the temple slide I showed you earlier. Uh, but it was so much fun to just laugh and enjoy and have a good time and... Uh, I'm so glad we did that because I think these people that come to the country, they're, many of them are illegal. They're just looking for work. They're separated from their spouses, their families. Um, and it, rather than just constantly coming to church and just having me translate for them, which I do over this radio headset thing, I'm translating sacrament and, and Sunday school and other things, to come together with other people who speak Spanish and just play games uh, and dance and laugh. We just, everyone laughed so hard. It was a lot of fun. So that's a quick look at that. And finally this week, early voting. Liz and I went uh, early vote on a Thursday or Friday. I can't remember which. The lines were pretty long. So we found another location in a smaller little country town. And we went there. And um, we know that Tennessee is not a swing state. We know that our votes doesn't matter kind of almost what we vote. It's not really going to matter or count, but we both voted our consciences. We both voted what we felt was best. I will share with you in closing who I voted for. I did a write-in um, and I, I wrote Jesus. Now I know it seems silly and it was probably a wasted vote, although in a state such as Tennessee, it doesn't matter what I voted for. It isn't going to make much of a difference. Our electoral votes are pretty much set. Um, but I just had to, I just couldn't really do either, to be honest with you. And then uh, the other, the other, some of the other, the Senate seats and other things, I, 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 I pretty much voted also my conscience, um, which is mostly conservative. And then my, uh, for, for the mayor of Hendersonville, because I didn't really study up on that too much, I went ahead and wrote in my wife. So officially, my wife, Liz, is, uh, you know, she's on the ballot. Well, she's on my ballot for the mayor of Hendersonville. And I may be the mayor of Hendersonville, but I know one thing, and that's I love you. XTC, come on, really, mayor of Simpleton? If you don't know XTC... Get to your Spotify, type in XTC, go to Fossil Fuel, XTC's Greatest Hits, and just enjoy the genius of one Andy Partridge and another Colin Molding, two very different composer, writer, recorders, singers, performers, but together, intertwined, they make XTC. They make ecstasy. <laughs> okay, get out of here.